This opening song is called The Answers You Seek. It's written by Stephen Cogswell. Get it at Autfy.com. That's A-W-T-F-Y dot com slash seek. I have the answers you seek. All right, let's start the show. Hello, you beautiful demon hordes of the internet. It's Tuesday night, and that means we have to be here, whether we're sick or not. Hi, I'm Brian Brushwood. Definitely super ill. Uh, not in, in the Beastie Boys sense either. Uh, hi, uh, 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 joining me is Justin Robert Young in, in Oakland, California. How are you, Justin? Justin, Justin, you're, you're, you're gonna have to lead. You're gonna have to lead. I'm already failing. I'm already I'm already crashing and burning. This isn't working. Brian, 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 Justin, Brian, I can't hear you. Brian, Jesus Christ, calm down. Calm down, Brian. Everything's gonna be fine. I don't know. I don't know, I man. Know. Listen, listen, Brian. This is just, it's very simple. You're gonna be fine. Here's all that happened. We didn't do a live show last week because right. it was election night, and I was doing the live show for election night. Right, so right, right, right. What, the problem that you have right now is just withdrawals. You're what? having a very common, understood night attack withdrawals. We have not done a live show in two weeks, so we're just going to keep – we're going to pump this night attack heroin back into your veins, and don't worry. All these trembly chills are all going to go away. Wait, 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 wait. So, 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 so it's not that I'm physically ill with the disease that my children had that they gave me and that caused me to sleep all day. All oh. this time, it's just been withdrawals from night attack. Exactly. Oh, my uh, God. I'm feeling see, better already. People, people stop doing drugs. They feel bad. Oh. Which is why they keep doing drugs. Well, it just seems like I, I, I should never have taken a week off from night attack. Whether, whether, <laughs> okay, I, I, we're on the same page. Hey, by the way, speaking of which, last week uh, I was able to tune in for the first half of your show. How did how did Wave Watch go? Were, were you pleased? Wave Watch was a blast. It was it was an absolute uh, 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 super great time. Uh, I'll tell you what, it could probably still be going since half the races we talked about aren't officially called yet. But uh, <laughs> It was uh, it was it was awesome. Thank you to everybody who came out. We had an amazing Diamond Club turnout for it. We sold the room out, which is great to do on a Tuesday night. Uh, uh, even even an election night, it was awesome to see the crowd out there, and 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 the 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 the, the Twitch crowd was uh, out of this world as well. So, but, but, but uh, thank I did you, th- thank you. I did notice that you were riffing on somebody uh, early on. And and I couldn't tell if it was a heckler that you were trying to put in his place or if it was just a, no, a rando, no, right. the so one guy the who didn't know who you were or what. So so we uh, – uh, this has been a slow-selling show because, as you might imagine, people aren't exactly putting in their calendar three months prior. This is what I'll be doing on election night, right? Like, right. Like, there's a lot of last-minute ticket buying. So all of a sudden, we, we find out that we're sold out, and uh, the, the venue says, okay, we can put another row right in front of you. You just need to move back. And I'm like, cool. All right, so let's do that. Then I show up from backstage, and they've instead, and this is like as they're letting people in, they don't have one front row. They have a little, like, Tetris little peninsula that's running to what is stage right, basically. It is just totally taken out stage right. Which is very weird because on the camera shot, it looks like I have empty seats at the show. Right. There were no ticketed empty seats. These were just extras that in case people wanted to come see the show once it started. So this is you're seeing this live. But the man in the back left was named Christian. And Christian had no idea who the fuck I was or why he was here seeing the show. He was just at this bar watching stuff come in that is also a theater and he decided to get coaxed into this show uh uh to come to come see it but he was also fucking face absolutely trash the entire time but you know this as being a performer you always want those guys there is a golden zone for drunk people right where they are playful but slow you can make fun of them and they won't 
be disruptive. Well, and and specifically, what you want to be able to do is throw zingers that let the rest of the crowd know that you acknowledge this dude is faced, but say them in such a way that they go right over his head, but yeah. land with everybody else. Absolutely. And so things started out with him uh, being slightly funny and disruptive, and it and like. He just took all sorts of fun, hilarious turns through the through the show, and, and including at one point rooting around backstage because he needed to charge his iPad as if that were a really important issue for him uh, to go, you know, uh, bungling around. But but uh, go ahead and check out the podcast that is that is live uh, now. So so go ahead and see it. Hells yeah. Uh, okay. Dude, uh, got- uh, kids, kids be giving people diseases. I spent all of today asleep. Uh, it was really, really weird. I, I, I was awake enough to go get the kids some uh, food uh, because I guess other kids are like Callie was genuinely confused. She was like, Dad, how is it possible for two people to be sick at the same time? <laughs> and I was like, well, there are diseases and there are germs. And she's like, oh, yeah, no, I got it. I got it. Germs. And then one person gets the other one sick. And then oh, now I get it, Dad. That's how two people are sick at the same time. Now, uh, do you want to play My Little Pony with me? He's like, no, I would really love to go back to sleep, <laughs> kid. Now, if you will please excuse me, uh, I'm going to cough into your mouth. <laughs> uh, so I, uh, I have a fun kid story. Go on. I, uh, I went to Orlando for my mom's birthday over the weekend, and it was a great time. But there was this moment where uh, Ashley brought out the Jackbox game for everybody to play, which is a big hit with the family. And uh, my little brother, who is, I mean, I guess the last time when I left Florida, he was eight or nine, right? And so... Uh, he's a quiet kid, you know, he's, he's getting, getting a little older now and we sit down and all of a sudden everybody's naming themselves and I see one of the characters has been named Justin's ass. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Good name. Good name. Right. Justin's ass. I mean, at this point my money is on Ash and she meant to write Justin's assistant, but then just ran out of characters. No. No, no. So we play that game. And then the next game, one of the characters is named Ligma Balls. <laughs> All right. Classic. Ligma Balls. The game after that, there's a character named Ben Dover. <laughs> All right. All right. A little less creative. And it's at that moment that I made a tremendously heartening and exciting revelation about my younger brother. I, I, I'd still love to believe this was Ashley the whole time, but go ahead. He's 13 years old <laughs> and he is just now finding all of these things funny. And he just got endless delight out of just writing ass and butt and balls like over and over and over again into the thing. And I was just like, I was like, Oh, it felt like, like like the last Jedi. I was just like, you've just taken your first steps into a much wider world. How delightful it will be for you to understand that your older brother has made a living off these jokes. They'll never not be funny. Embrace all of them. Understand. That, that so 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 future. so at this at this point though, like you have to feel like like you have a responsibility. You have a burden upon you. You cannot rush this. You cannot give too much too fast. Otherwise. Uh, you know, he'll decide uh, this is uh, for old people. You, you. So did you step back or did you just quietly acknowledge? Did you did you uh, NHA it and support like, oh, I like that you're no, using no, words no, like No, no, no. You got to be you got to play it cool. OK, you, you got you to play it a little funny. And so instead of uh, 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 pouring out with effusive praise and excitement like I am right now, I just saw as the last game was played and big peen uh, <laughs> slightly <laughs> lost. <laughs> that I was like, hmm, just well played. I just gave him a very slight nod and and a polite golf clap for Big Peen's performance. I would love to believe like a uh, Big Peen is a uh, a uh, uh, big industrial dildo markets, right? Where it's just like a oh man, Big Peen's gonna come in and and siliconize oh, oh, all think, this. Yeah, yeah, that that it's a, that it's like a big lobbying effort. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> When will you, these congressmen, stop taking big peens come money? 
I can't believe that Big Peen fell short, though. That's strange. <laughs> <I know. laughs> not but, not like Big Peen to come up short uh, when it mattered the most. But you want to know what? He's learning. Uh, uh, Brian, I got a story I want to tell you about. All right, all right. Hit me up. Hit me up. There is somebody, a band after our own heart. Oh shit, son! I know, I know the story. I don't think Bonnie, Bonnie, do you know the story? What? Oh, this is great. This is great, Bryce. Do you know the story? I do know the story. Okay, okay, okay. All right, all right, all right, all right. For for the uninitiated, let's let's talk them through. Uh huh. All right. So here's the uh, here's here's the story. There is a band by the name of. I don't know. It, it can either be threatened or threatened. It's got to be threatened. It's got to be threatened. Threaten? It's got to be threaten. Yeah. Threaten. 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 It's like the word threaten, but with instead of that last e, it's an i. Yeah. Threaten. Threaten. The, uh, it's the tin version of threat, or it's threat on the inside. Oh. But it, but it's also a guy's name. It, it it's it's Jared Threaten. Dude's uh, dude's name is Jared Threaten. Is it his real name? Uh, uh sure. Not. Of course it is, Bonnie. <laughs> uh, also Santa Claus is real. Uh, the oh. uh, <laughs> uh, threaten. Does the things that small bands do mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. get ahead? Yeah, I mean, some small comedy podcasts might have done similar things. Well. <laughs> I mean, you well, go to their I mean, website, right, and they've got like a whole tour booked in Europe, right? Uh, like, yeah, look at that, UK. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the the breaking the world tour uh, all throughout uh, November. It's a pretty heavy schedule, but they're playing London, Newcastle, Glasgow, Bristol, Manchester, Birmingham, Belfast, Paris, Bergamo, Weinheim. So all right. at this point of the story, Supreme given everything good. that we've heard, all I could think of is Wait. my early days trying to make it in the college crowd. I remember how important it was to, regardless of how factually uh accurate it was as far as paying gigs i needed to display a full calendar so i would book i would know that there are open mic nights uh down on lamar or or, or south congress or whatever and i would put them on my calendar as you know this venue that venue this venue the other venue knowing that if anybody wanted to book one i would i would gladly give up performing for free so that i could go do a paying gig or whatever um 20 years later, it seems like that is a little bit of a dicier game than it was for me. Brian, you are the host of Scam School, and together we have pulled some funny little pranks. Yes. But everything that you've described up till now is accurate business strategy compared to what young Jared threatened did. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. So Jared Threaten took it a little bit farther and it didn't play well in the 21st century where a little thing called accountability comes to, into play. Do, do you have any guess as to what the story we're about to tell you, Bonnie? Um, well, I, I got some hints here. It sounds like uh, it sounds like he was fabricating some dates, maybe. Or oh no, 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 oh no, 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 no! Actually, Bonnie, that's the one thing that was for real. Oh Jared yeah, threatened, and his band threatened had actually uh, booked gigs okay. with uh, uh, all these venues. Uh, he was uh, set to play all throughout the UK, Ireland, Scotland, France, Denmark. Right. All right. However. He got these gigs because he was not only the lead singer yeah. of, of Threaten and the creative genius, but he also, you know, and this you know, small band, small artist. He was also his own press agent. He didn't use his name when he was his press agent. Yeah, I mean, of course oh, not. Or maybe, you know, maybe not his stage name. You and, know, maybe, uh, maybe use his given name when he was doing that stuff. Yeah. You know, and, uh, when, when, when the venues asked, hey, how are the ticket sales on your website going? Uh, he said, "Oh, they're they're going great. We have like a hundred sold already." Also, worth worth quick side jag. Uh, yeah. In order to get these things booked, it's important that one portray themselves as being successful. So back in our day at the colleges, we probably would have made sure to you know get uh, get a VHS camera on Brian on stage and then pan out to the audience, showing it very very full. Yeah. Nowadays, I mean, that's so much hassle to actually have a showcase 
seems like you could just get footage of a crowd going nuts and then overlay the audio of your band playing. No way. Really? And give the impression that there's a sold out crowd going nuts oh. for your stuff. Oh. You know yeah. what? Can I can I side jag here? All right. Okay, like it kind of bothers me when like hairdressers put up like pictures of like glam pictures of women who've had their hair done and then like I don't believe you did that hair. Like that's the kind of hair that you want to do. I, uh, but I don't think you actually did that hair. I always assumed that was a menu. Like it's like at Denny's when yeah. it's two in the morning and you're too drunk no, 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 to, no, no, no. to read. Like on their advertisement. Just point to the picture. Like if you're, you're putting like, out that. on Facebook, like come get your hair done at our salon, and it's like stock footage. Okay, that's the, kind of cheesy. Imagine, Bonnie, right? that you were going to get booked throughout Europe cutting hair. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. This sounds like fun. All right. right? Yeah. That, but but uh, you don't have any formal beautician training. So instead, you just took those pictures and you said that you did all of them. Yeah. And then as you were going from salon to salon, you were going to the top salons all throughout Europe and you were just giving them, hey, by the way, uh, so you know, I have booked all these things through my own Facebook page and through my own website. So just make sure that you clear out all your waiting room. And in fact, we don't I don't really want anybody else. They're also cutting hair. I, I want to lock down your entire salon, but don't worry. Here are the 300 people over a four-week residency that I'm going to be cutting hair for. Imagine that you did that, because that's effectively what Jared Threaten did yeah. all throughout Europe. That man had no tickets sold. All the Facebook uh, check-ins saying that they were going to go to that show were all bought and paid for. Right. Uh... All of them, uh, like, uh, originated out of, like, India or Thailand or something. Wow. Yeah, this was absolute total horseshit. In fact— Wait, wait, which, heard... by, which, by the way, but I can almost forgive all of this if there wasn't a victim, right? But there was a victim mm -hmm. in all of the venues yes. that made concessions based on the expectation of crowded houses and the ability to— uh, you know, sell a lot like of booze. people were out out of money for wait staff and Correct. opening. Correct, and, like yeah. they planned based on this being a huge event, and 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 not only was it not a huge event, it was a zero attended event. And pre-internet, that would have been all there was. Like like he would yeah. have pulled it off and then talked about his big European tour. And weirdly, starting by astroturfing, maybe he would have turned into something successful. But we live in the Yelp era. And uh, yeah. and very quickly, venues spoke to other venues saying, hey, is it just us or did literally nobody buy any tickets for this well, show? Apparently, it all falls apart during the first show when there are 20 people that show up oh. and they were all people on the list of the opener. So oh. we had an opener. He had an opening act, oh. and, and the 20 people that were in the audience were on the opening band's list to get in. Yeah. And they have a whole staff of people waiting for a gigantic line based on the pre-sales, and it all comes crashing down that this is a totally, totally fraudulent band. Uh, Adam Adam Gostick from the band The Unresolved, who was uh, going to open for Threaten at the Asylum in Birmingham, uh, quoted saying, there were 13 people in the room when we played, the sound engineer, bartender, 10 people we brought, and one who actually got a ticket. So. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So, um, anyways, has anybody listened to his music? I did. Oh. I, I, I have not listened to any threatened. Can we, can we pull up any, any threatened? Uh, yeah, so so in the uh, uh, I specifically listened to the clips where like apparently all the clips were either only the band and you couldn't tell who how many people were watching. So and, and what sounded like piped in crowd music on top oh. or just the audience. And then it, it was like the music was was blasted up. Living is dying. I mean, I, I don't know. I it's feel surprisingly poppy. I thought that it would be more death metal-y. Yeah. Like yeah, threatened, you know? Well, and I feel... I, 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 by the way, this has a million views. Uh, oh, my God. 
What the fuck? We need to pay for him to be on the show. <laughs> <laughs> but he's done the smart thing of hiding the uh, thumbs up, thumbs down. Oh, interesting. Uh, so you can't tell how how many of them are are uh, all fake comments. So oh, yeah, because this video is this video is from 2017. So it's very possible these were bot views. Also. Yeah. Wild. Oh. oh yeah. No 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 no. This guy went. He went the full. Like he's he's got a real talent for understanding how to create an internet hoax. Like he covered all the back doors. They, they're, they're, it was a shockingly thorough creation of a band. Yeah, uh, man, I, I don't know. I feel like like with just a little bit of self-deprecation, he could have pulled this off. But it sounds like uh, uh, from from the reports from other people who were there at the events. He, he was very standoffish. He would only talk to his own people. He was putting on the show of being somebody who actually had a show to put on. Was he hoping that people would just buy tickets? Or do you think he was just... I think I think that... Uh, so so uh, similar to the reason I started doing BBOTR 11 years ago was I was like, well, if I want to host a show, what do I need to have done? Mm -hmm. I need to, need to have hosted a show. So my guess is he was thinking, if I want to be the kind of act that tours all over the world, I need to have a, you know, continent wide. I mean, tour. his only crime is that he kind of outdid himself, right? Well, his crime was well, no, that his, he his crime is that he lied to all the himself. venues, yeah, uh, promising that he would bring in people uh, that yeah. never showed up. That that that's the crime. Yeah. All right, wait, hold on, Brian. So let's reimagine. Let's let's just get some free advice for threat. Sure. Now we can understand you actually trying to come out and do pop punk, right? Is is not not didn't work, right? But if you were to make it a magical experience <laughs> where even at the end of the day of the venues like shit, we're out a bunch of money. But holy shit, you have to hear about what happened with this guy. He sold no tickets, but he came out and did this act like what would it be? Because I'm, I'm, my, I'm my, my, my starting bid is a note for note, like physical representation and copy mannerisms and all of an early Seinfeld act. If he just came out and just did like 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 what's the deal with airline peanuts? Oh no 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 oh, oh you're 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 saying okay, so you're saying like like what he was ostensibly selling was a uh, metal show or or, or pop yeah. funk or whatever. Um but at the end of the day, what you want is for nobody be to be so angry that they'll say bad things about you on Twitter yes. or, yeah, or no, no, Facebook. You, you want to be like, oh my god. What you don't know is that the new Banksy is touring uh, uh, England and he's selling himself as this crappy pop punk thing. But it's actually a brilliant artistic statement about uh, our modern society and, and who trusts who. I mean, I would my instinct would be to recruit them, right, to, to do magic for everybody there at the bar and and try to get them in and then just say, hey, man, are you enjoying deception and chicanery? Well, what if we pulled a hot one on the rest of Europe yeah. by giving five star reviews and lying about how full the crowds were tonight? Uh, Wouldn't that be fun? What if he actually just tried to go out and get people to attend the show, though? I mean, I mean, I think he, he very probably much was trying to do that. Oh, he I was think that trying was very to do much that, but just nobody intention. did. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think what I, in the most charitable interpretation, I would say he was trying to create his own showcase yeah. where, where, where by virtue of make it, I think his thoughts were if everybody believes that this is going to be a successful show, everybody will act the way they do when they know they're booking a successful show and therefore it will become a successful show, which is not insane. It's not, it's not outrageous for him to think that it just uh, turned out not to be true. Yeah. No, that's bad. No, it's a bad thing. I mean, like, I guess you can you can wish on hopes and dreams, but like for all the effort that he put into pretending that he was a, a, a success, he could put that same kind of money and effort into promoting himself, right? What? Well, yeah, but but I'm sure in his mind he thought, and again, this is me trying to be charitable. Like, I'm gonna guess that he thought that buying likes from Thailand or wherever would be an effective strategy because uh, uh, do you remember I, I want to say it was a year and a half two years ago there was somebody that did this video that that uh, broke down the differences between uh, the scam artists that sell likes on Facebook 
and Facebook's promote your page likes. And right. the results were identical. The conclusion oh, being really? that Facebook's promote your page is essentially uh, uh, will get a bunch of people on the other side of the planet to click the like button and it won't do anything for your business at all. So, so I, again, trying to be charitable, I'm going to say that maybe this dude was just a sucker, duped. He thought he could actually get it. Oh, man, I don't know. Like, but he, but he, also he didn't bought have all the these fan likes base. And, I don't know. But, I feel like he should have made a performance art. It, it should have been it should have been welcome to my TED talk. He should have walked out and 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 had a one man band outfit with symbols between his knees and just did something silly to be like, hey, look, like, look at me. I thought the, the, the bit is I bought my way through Europe. <laughs> so you're, you're saying P.T. Barnum it. You know, as long as everybody has fun, then it's it's I mean, not a cer crime, certainly, right? certainly when your boots on the ground and you're there, yeah. it's like all I know is the moment I walk in, this is an empty auditorium and every single one of these motherfuckers has to walk away happy. Right. right? And it's like and you figure out how to make them happy. Maybe some people are, are like, uh, uh, well, I, I thought there'd be a big crowd and I canceled a date night with my wife so that I could be here. Uh, and it's like, well, guess what? You're about to see a really good card trick. Or mm -hmm. if I was a musician, guess what? I'm going to write a love ballad for your for your wife. Yeah. Uh, tell me about your wife. Let's write it right now. Like, right. like you do something so that all nine people at that gig <laughs> say, I saw something truly unique and special today. Right. What you don't do is hide behind your crew, act like you're too big for this, act confused why there's no audience, and then storm off there by guaranteeing that somebody makes a BuzzFeed article on this shit. Oh, my gosh. Uh, all right. One, one, one more music story before we go, and this is a quick one. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, uh, Joe Perry of the band Aerosmith uh, uh, had to be rushed to the what? hospital. Our, 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 Hold our, on, our, uh, Joe Perry. Uh, what 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 does he play? Guitar. The cymbals. Yeah, he mostly does the triangle. He's just like, <laughs> remember remember that big triangle breakdown and in in, uh, in in dude looks like a lady. Yeah, I always thought yeah. that was Ed Grimley, but that's fine. No, yeah, yeah. It's like, uh, oh, what a funky lady. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> uh, he uh, had to be rushed to the hospital because he <laughs> was short of breath performing with Billy Joel on stage. Wait, but, what, what? I'm sorry. He was on stage with Billy Joel and then on stage. rocked so hard that he had to be hospitalized. Brian with a possible heart attack. <laughs> Look, he ought to know by now, man. <laughs> oh I'm so God. fucked up. I can't. It, like, I mean, I'm so feel so bad. I hope he's okay, but it's just. <laughs> <laughs> what is our obsession with Joel? With with with, with I don't Billy Joel? Know. I don't know. There's a project that may or may not be yeah. happening that involves. A, a retrospective of conversations of Brian and I in which there are two things that no matter what keep coming up inexplicably, no matter the time of year, it is Billy Joel and Christmas. Yep. And don't. And, and at some point, I just have to believe that in our childhoods, there is a shared moment where like both of us were yelled at by our parents while Billy Joel was playing in the background on Christmas. <laughs> I, I do know that when I was a late teenager, like like buying, I, I wonder if it's the availability of and and the the the, the largely you know uh, rich back catalog that was available in the two disc the two CD compilation Billy Joel's greatest hits because there was something about like every single one of those were things that you knew whether from your at age three age five age nine age thirteen age fifteen or the current year in which uh, we didn't start the fire came out. Um, I, I, I wonder if maybe he just hit peak Billy Joelness during that time and it got lodged in our brains. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I was a kid during his like river of dreams. Heyday. Holy cow. Uh, no, like, no. Yeah. That, that, that's what I was letting go of Billy Joel is because I was a freshman in college at that time. And it's yeah. just like, you're like, oh, like, hey, <laughs> adorable. Hey, hey. He's still Look, making music. In the music. middle of the night, I'm going to be doing a lot more than walking in my sleep. Hey. <laughs> I'm going to be spanking it to these pornographic magazines that are under my mattress that I can buy because I'm 18 now. 
Well, downloading on the internet, that'll take forever, baby. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, but, yeah, no, I I, I, I don't know. I, uh, Billy Joel's just one of those acts that, for whatever reason, I've always, uh, like, I, I'll, I'll find myself going through Billy Joel phases, and, and it just, I don't know. It's a weird, it's a weird, it's a weird fascination for us. But I, please get well, Joe Perry. <laughs> I, I have a thought. Yeah. It's just what? that. It, you know, he got played a lot because he he, oh, he really, got played. He got played. Oh, he, yeah. he he was the he he knew how to make songs that didn't offend, right? So they get, didn't offend. Did you ever hear that song? Uh, never mind. Just gonna stop. I'm gonna stop. <laughs> <laughs> Where he mentions Something all those offensive. marginalized minorities of all varieties. Uh, uh, no, I, I, I actually, I, I, I don't know that there is one. Oh, I, was, I was gonna. No, make don't throw shade. Not in this cultural climate. <laughs> <laughs> Pump up the brakes. Pump them up. Stop the show immediately. <laughs> Stop the show immediately. <laughs> Anyways, like I walked into the studio today. Also, by the way. But that's an amazing Bonnie. You get the star of the night because this is how every night attack Billy Joel bit starts, right? Is that we start talking about Billy Joel and then we find a thread that we then go for ten to fifteen minutes uh, riffing on things that we can then work into Billy Joel lyrics. And Brian just introduced the idea of racist Billy Joel songs, and Bonnie very quickly like just the, both both feet on the brakes, like no. No. <laughs> uh, no, that that's uncool. <laughs> because man. it'll be uh, today's quip would be tomorrow's truth, you know. Yeah. Anyways. Rest in peace, Let's Billy Joel. All I'm doing is thinking of racist Billy Joel. <laughs> <laughs> Before it's they start not spilling true, out. Guys. <laughs> Hey, man, is now a good time for us to remind everybody that they can support the show by heading on over to patreon.com slash night attack. They can join the thousand plus beautiful patrons that keep us loud, live and independent every single week. Most importantly, none of you guys who aren't paying money are getting the full story. You're only getting part of the story. You're only getting the episode. We have a pre-show, a post-show. It's a three-hour extravaganza. It's like you're hanging out right here with us every Tuesday night, only it could be Thursday while you're on the uh, 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 the Nordic track. Oh, my God, man. Uh, listen, we've all been there. You're on the Nordic track, and, and you're like, I, I just finished listening to Night Attack. It was good. I would like more Night Attack. Well, that's where you can go ahead Right on that Nordic track and uh, grab your phone and uh, just as you're, you're, you're moving on the Nordic track, you just uh, you just go ahead and subscribe to our Patreon, patreon.com slash night attack. I swear to God, you can be on a fucking Nordic track uh, and uh, uh, after you subscribe to our Patreon, you can grab that RSS feed, copy it, one hand, other hand on the Nordic track, and, and you can copy it right into the podcatcher of your choice and, and get all of it. It's one time. You never have to sign in again. You never have to worry about a password. You never have to worry about the RSS changing. Even if you change your Patreon level, Patreon will make sure that your RSS feed, or RSS feed gives you everything that you are required. And you're done for the day. Congratulations for completing your Nordic track. All right. You know what? Uh, okay. I hear you sliding motherfuckers, sliding on the sly, trying to wish for more things. And I hear that one of the things that you're wishing for is for us to update, update our Patreon video. Never. You know what? <laughs> We're going to do it. We have a goal. Wait. If if like a lot of you suddenly subscribe, <laughs> then we're gonna up up upgrade that video, and, and we'll do it on a Nordic track. Wait a minute. Does anybody <laughs> have a Nordic for tracks? that? Can I, we uh, set? Go, uh, what what are we at? What are we at in terms of pay? Uh, you know what? We're at a very low number, Justin. It's terrible. It's awful. We're about no, to go out of bad business. Number. That's but a really, what really we, bad number. But if we can get to a very high number. Then we'll be wealthy and rich. He's asking so, you to pick a number. Yeah, no, no, we, we a very high number. That's all we're asking for know. is a very high number. Oh, so wait, wait, are we not gonna? Are we not gonna give a number? <laughs> I mean, I'm scared too. Wait, <laughs> okay, this is the broken promises alert. <laughs> I'm right now, I'm comfortable with just saying a very large number. Right what now. is the number? <laughs> you're saying a high number. I think you're saying what you really want is weed or yeah, something. Yeah, no, no, no. you know? <laughs> Okay, the number has smoked a lot of weed. Whichever number it go. is, all right, it's no, very no, no. high. So here's what it is. It's as soon as we get to. 
1,420 patrons. <laughs> One four twenty. <laughs> All right. Okay. We will redo. We will redo the. Uh, uh, we, we will redo the Patreon. All right. Game. All right. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. If we if we bump up to 1,420 patrons, I say we do the new Patreon video high. And what I mean by that <laughs> is uh, not that we would smoke weed and then do it, but that we would go to the Mile High City and then smoke <laughs> weed and then do it. <laughs> <And> so <laughs> so if, if we go up by, by 288 patrons. You're making very specific promises. 288 more earlier. patrons that we're going to do a new Patreon video and we're going to do it mile high. <laughs> There we go. All right, so there, the, it's now out there. One thousand four hundred and twenty patrons. We will, we will, we will track this, and we'll see. Can we get high? <laughs> Give us a higher love, won't you? Join the one thousand four hundred and twenty patrons. <laughs> Is that a Billy Joel song? No. <laughs> Higher love? Higher love is not. <laughs> it might as well be. <laughs> uh, all right, but Brian, if you do subscribe to the uh, Patreon or you adjust your uh, your your uh, pledge upward, you get to be part of. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the night attack. New Patreon name chant corner hour. It's an hour of <laughs> Look, man, I don't know this guy's backstory. Uh, or lady, uh, though the picture very much looks like a guy. Um, uh, look, uh, I would like to believe that this is the progeny of the, uh, the velvet rope industry. And it's like back in the 70s. You're like, oh, man, let me tell you what, kid. I'm glad I brought you into this world because one day all this is going to be yours. And then just warehouse pans open on velvet rope after velvet rope after velvet rope. And he's like, uh, we invented the velvet rope. We're the Corden family, C-O-R-D-O-N, right? Mm -hmm, and it's like, yeah. we're cording people off. And then, and then I would love to believe that this patron like was like, no, fuck you, Dad. Uh, that's elitism. That's that's bullshit. I'm more egalitarian. Everybody should be allowed to crowd up together, and there shouldn't be no dividing lines. He's like, well, I'll never believe that, son. And then he's just like, well, fuck you, Dad. I'm changing my name. I'm no longer a cordon. I'm gonna start my own empire. My name is Chris, Chris, Chris Orden. Chris Orden. That's what they'll say, Dad. They'll all be chowing my name because I, I broke the velvet rope game. Chris Orden. Chris Orden. Chris Orden. Chris Orden. Chris Orden. Chris Orden. Anyway, he later became president. Oh. And his name now is Chris Orden. Edward, Edward, Edward president. president. <laughs> He gives Ed talks, as he likes to call them. <laughs> yeah. He's like, he's like, hey, hey, I only have 20 minutes. I'm going to give you an Ed talk. Yeah, except mine are 25. I'm not trying to shortchange you. <laughs> hey, man. Uh, so I, 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 have a, I have a story of what happened this weekend. Uh, sure. I mean, uh, this is, of course, about the time that we uh, uh, go ahead and let everybody donate on twitch.tv slash night attack. Yeah. So, so uh, as Ren Agu probably understood, uh, my daughter turned uh, 11, so I, 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 I left the house. Well, you know, uh, as Knotts teaches us in his book, uh, Koro Metrikaku, uh, that's a good thing to do, Brian. <laughs> well, Brussel bury me and call me Brian. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the important thing is that flavored toothpaste was one of the things I brought as I went camping with the dogs at the new property. Well, uh, bristle wrestles uh, is is something that is also a popular <laughs> dance to do. Oh, Just man. like gentlemen top hat uh, uh, while you're out there with your with your kids. Uh, so basically, I took the dog, and for the horde curious, yes, I did uh, just uh, hang around with the dogs, and I lost sneakers twice. That was that was a real life. Wait, you took you took sneakers out there too? <sighs> yeah, no, and he escaped twice. It was bad. He, one of the well, times. Was I out mean, the aren't front. you a real Squidosaurus Rex? 
Uh, indeed, uh, I was just punker KC in it. Uh, I, I, but I made a campfire on a on a stump and and uh, I, I went to bed. It was it was delightful. It was really the Lenina. Uh, uh, by the way, as our bit boss halfway mark, it is open for the taken. Bad weave with only six bits in the lead. We will see who is the bit boss by the end of the show. Yay. Yeah. Brian, you're sick. Yeah, I sure am. And 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 also everyone also knows. not appropriate for you to just you know just I I, I, I teach my kids to uh, be kinder than that. You don't just turn and look at someone and be like, "You're sick. You're sick." Look you at spent you. the past look two you. hours telling. Me look at you. <laughs> All right, so I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to say it out loud. But Brian, I'm just going to text you a racist Billy Joel. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's in his. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Sorry, right. yeah, but, but you, you, you can't know what? say it out loud. You Guilty as charged, yeah. Bryce. I, I am under the weather. I saw you, yes. you posted in, in one of the discords the other night that you were sick, and yep. so I, I came up with this game for you. I figured, oh, Brian's sick, we should prepare an antiviral for him. <laughs> antiviral? <laughs> right. So these are like, like, like videos that are so bad that you. Not only don't share them with your friends, but you write your friends a letter saying, whatever you do, don't watch this video. That would have been a much smarter idea for the, uh, <laughs> for the concept of the game. You know, uh, I, I thought, well, Brian needs an antiviral, and there's really one name you can trust when it comes to antivirals. Codeine. So, okay, Brian guessed Codeine. Justin? Oh, I would, I would say uh, 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 Penicillin. Penicillin, okay, good. Well, that, that's antibacterial. It has no effect no. on the body. Uh, oh, silver. Get, nerd, would, fucking brag about silver. it. I would say it's the little blue pill. Uh, Viagra. 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 Wait, no. <laughs> no, wait. <Yes. laughs> wait, 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 wait. No, yeah. you're right. Uh, Viagra. That's, uh, <laughs> no, no. Cures what ails you. If what ails you is uh, the no inability boners. to copulate. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Okay, well, these are all very good guesses. No, that's not quite where I went. <laughs> Uh, I, I thought, of course, our, our good friends over at McAfee, uh, oh, I thought they, they would be able to help you out really, really well. So we, we designed a game all around McAfee. So all you're going to have to do is tell me if these tweets are from... Quick, quick, quick. Oh, 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 oh. You're answering my question because my question was... Can I finish? Yeah. Like, like the guy or the brand. So, all so you, this is the guy. All you have to do is tell me whether the tweets that I tell you are from at Mac McAfee or at official McAfee. That's all you have to do is tell me which one do, is which. Do, do I get to know which one is the guy, which one is the brand? Or is uh, yeah, or I mean, will that become – you know what? I, I'm going to assume that will become apparent, and I'm ready to play. I mean, play. let's do an example. Ready. ready. I'm going to give you a tweet. Uh, we'll, we'll do one person per tweet, so you'll go back and forth. Uh, uh, Justin, we'll start with you uh, with, sure. this, with this example, uh, this, this example one. Uh, the, the tweet reads, happy hashtag election day, America. We hope you're out there hashtag voting. While you wait, learn more about potential cybersecurity threats during the hashtag midterms. Now, is that from uh, at McAfee on Twitter or at official McAfee? So I would say, wait. No, I guess we don't know <laughs> they're not, which is, the, which is which, right? Well, I mean, you can you, you might know that. I suspect we'll figure out. Cough button. Which is which. Cough button. I suspect we'll figure out pretty quick which is which. I will say that that seems like a very business-like tweet with very appropriate hashtags. So I will say that that is official McAfee. All right. Well, your answer of official McAfee would be incorrect. That was from at McAfee. Oh, oh, now this, oh, oh so there we go. The, Verified. Now, okay, 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 okay. Now, this was the example, so we're, we're about to start in earnest. Just, uh, Brian, we're going to start with right, you. I'm, I'm ready. Full, uh, dialed in. Dialed in. I'm, I'm, I'm at 100%, if 100% means high on cough meds. Great. Uh, the tweet reads, quote, My sommelier challenged me to drink a bottle of wine that Hilton Hotel sells for $700 per bottle and compare it to Primal Sludge, which we buy in volume for $1.63 per bottle. It was a no contest. After downing a bottle of each, Primal Sludge won, hands fucking down. Now, Brian, was that at McAfee or at official McAfee? <laughs> it does seem like uh, uh, it has the authority that I associate with the official brand McAfee. So I'm going to say it's got to be official McAfee. Brian, you're going to say this is at uh, this is at official McAfee. Official, yes. All right, Brian, your answer of that official McAfee would be... Bam! Just like that. Mm. That's all there is to it. Mm. <laughs> 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 I 
And that is definitely a picture of John McAfee downing a bottle of wine. Schaefer Hilton Select. Although, I mean, look, if it were with the fact that we know he's fucking really crazy, it does look a little like freshman year in college where you want to try and prove that you're a badass and so you're going to take pictures like that. I mean, are, are we ageist for only finding him fascinating because he's old and still living the 22-year-old lifestyle? Oh, uh, he's a he's a he's a real character. Interesting character in, yeah. in a real interesting. Is... Are you aware of his hammock? Uh, no, but I am aware of the fifteen hundred bits we just got from Hando Tadpool. Thank you very much. Whoa. So is this guy like known? Like, are you? Oh, 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 Bonnie, oh, oh. Don't, 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 the game. I think will tell her oh, a go, lot about go, John. Oh, this is wonderful, journey. Bonnie. You're, 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 you're on a wonderful journey. Understand that it pays off. Okay. Also, Brian, did you check your text messages? <laughs> no, <laughs> I can't. I. I uh... Yeah. Oh, all right, all right, really? and we're done. Uh, no, it's fine. It's not worth it. Not worth it. <laughs> God fine. damn, that's funny. fine. Okay, R Justin, we're starting with you, or we're going to you. The tweet reads, "Quote: In reference to Kanye's password choices, password and all zeros are the most secure passwords these days. Not even brute force decryption engines use them. The reasoning: No one could be that stupid. So why waste processing power looking for them? <laughs> Kanye is on the leading edge." Oh my god, this is amazing! Now, was that uh, at official McAfee or at McAfee? Wow, that one actually. This is this is a harder game than I thought yeah. because uh, th this seems like the kind of factoid that you would uh, fill in uh, between business announcements, right? Mm -hmm. But it also seems like something that would uh, come out of that the mouth. Noted of crazy McAfee. man John McAfee would be. Uh, I'm going to say that it's, yeah, I think it's official McAfee, just because I don't think that a security company would in any way be uh, uh, seriously asking people to, or suggesting that all zeros are, are a good thing. All right, Justin, your answer of at official McAfee is... Correct the moon. Bam. Just like that. That's all there is to it, I also probably say uh, McAfee as a brand will not call someone stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Brian, what happened to your mic? Not, not it th fell. <laughs> Sometimes nothing. it falls. It's fine. Wait, it, it, it's, it's, it's floating because it's meant to float. And Bonnie, Bonnie's working on not it. Not in any way because Bonnie's uh, doing a Lego project over on the side here. <laughs> okay, well, it's fine. While she's doing that, I Brian. just have a floating mic. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, here's, here's, here's one for you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read you a tweet. Quote. People make fun of my stomach. Here's my regimen. <laughs> Booze, cigarettes, zero exercise, experimental recreational research chemicals. I can skate by on this regimen because I am 73 and most people label the stomach as meaningless compared to the miracle that I am still alive. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I do believe it. it is official McAfee, but I would love to believe that one day McAfee will retweet that the same in the same spirit with which it was intended. Correct the mundo. Yeah! That's right. Just like that. One John McAfee. <laughs> 73. We just saw a photo of him. All of these tweets are from the past, uh, uh, I don't know, a couple of weeks maybe, a couple of months. Uh, he was not looking too bad for 73 in that uh, in that last, in that wine photo. Goddamn right. All right, Justin, I, here's the thing. Dude ran for president. I, I, he ran, he ran, he and he dominated the libertarian debates. What? Like, like, like John Stossel had the only libertarian third party candidate debates, and uh, and strangely, McAfee came off as the most lucid and and dialed in with the best uh, <laughs> rejoinders. All right, well, Justin, uh, we're gonna go to you with this one. This is question four. Quote: Annoying adverts pushing you to the edge. At Gary J. Davis shares insights on how to customize browser push notifications and stay more secure. Oh, Bryce, uh, geez, man, we're really, really throwing the throwing the heaters here early on. I, I think that that is uh, uh, one hundred percent the uh, uh, at McAfee. I think that that is McAfee, the company, uh, giving a real life news you can use tip on how to secure your browser. I see. Uh, Justin, your answer of that McAfee is correct. The moon. Correct. Nicely done, sir. 
Info. Brian, I said I said I sent you another text message. <sighs> All right, let me, uh... <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I Justin. I you it's a terrible idea. <laughs> just don't. <laughs> let me just... I, I'm just going to read the first two no, words. No, 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 no. And the know. last word. No. <laughs> it just said, scenes from... <laughs> restaurant. No, no, yeah, no, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Number five. <laughs> Brian, this is going to you. Quote. Yep. With the Winklevoss twins, or so they said, I trust nothing. <laughs> Even though everyone verified their identity, I believe they are clones and are part of a CIA conspiracy <laughs> to get me to divulge my secret knowledge of the crypto space. Trust oh. no one. Oh my God. I would love it so much if the company was tweeting this. <laughs> But I'm gonna gonna have to go with official McAfee and say this is the man, not the company. That would be amazing, though. Brian, your answer is correct. Oh my god. Oh wait, and he's there. Oh, you didn't disclose that he was there with the Winklevoss twins. That's what he That's said. Amazing. With the Winklevoss twins. That's amazing. <laughs> is that a blunt in his mouth? Uh, no, I think very it's just gray hair. Uh, no, oh. that's very likely a a cigarette at least. Yeah. I think that looks like a filter. I think that's a cigarette. But there you go. Uh, this is heating up. You guys are, are going for a no-hitter here. Uh, as we go into question six. Justin. Quote. Yeah. Whale fucking. No joke. Each year on February 1st, the Molokai Channel, a few men compete in the world's only whale fucking contest. Humpback <laughs> whales are easy to fuck for a second or less. World record, 31 seconds. I completed once. Almost got my ribs crushed. Stick with ostriches. <laughs> so, Justin, I'm going to need you I to love, tell me if this I is... Love, I love the fact that, that the, like not a real tweet is not an ab- option in this game. This is amazing. So I'm going to need you to tell me if that is uh, noted lunatic John McAfee <laughs> or antivirus <laughs> software Mac- McAfee Security. Stick with ostriches. <laughs> so wait, so this is the one. McAfee's like the one that comes preloaded on computers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Intel bought them for a while, and then they kind of spun it back out. But and no, he... I think that this is. I think this is out of uh, official McAfee. Uh, uh, John McAfee. I feel like yeah, that's that's probably him. All right, let's see. Drum roll, please. Your answer is. Bam. Also, is like is that. Will fucking the real still. thing? I mean, he says it. In I mean, the Molokai Channel. I guess. I guess I'll just believe it. It's on the internet. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna Google whale fucking Molokai so Channel. It's gotta wait, be in the blowhole, right? Better... Where it's like you gotta find one. You you dive on it. And Bryce, tell you me. Slide in past the barnacles, and you don't tell mind me. You the did chafing. that in 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 incognito on that computer. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Uh, very much not. Uh, let's see. Mike TV Live says, that's how baby whales are made, Brian. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, I can't quite find The it. trees hate you. They're fucking your nose. <laughs> Only okay. your nose is a blowhole and the trees are okay. men. By next and week. Hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. You think that they're fucking the blowhole or are they f- uh, fucking another part they of the whale? It has to be. Oh, it the has blow to be. What, what, what else would you put your dick in? So you suffocate. I don't, I'm, the not, guy. I'm not a whale expert. Well, I mean, okay. Like, so, 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 what? You, you, you gotta dive underneath a whale, hold your breath, flip around, get uh, downward I mean, dog, upside contact. missionary. If it, if it were easy, everyone would do it. Well, I mean, I, I think it's hard enough to just find a breaching whale, leap upon it, and stick your dick in the blowhole. And, and by the way, if true, to complete that to completion, uh, maybe he should have been the president. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just saying, all right, somebody find out who they're trying to fuck, <laughs> where where they're fucking in that whale. Unless he's just, maybe John McAfee's lying. Wait, maybe. wait, 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 maybe. Whoa, 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 whoa. Well, this man ran for, ran for, <clears throat> take two, this man ran for president. <laughs> There's, you're saying yeah. he would lie? The Molokai Channel. Let's look up all Someone the stats we need on the me. Molokai I... Channel's whale fucking contest. A few contest men that complete, I... compete. Uh, I, 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 I mean, that's probably him and a few bre- buddies. In, like, in uh, the listen, Googling that if, I did, he... if we if we can get the Patreon to 1,421 <laughs> patrons, 
Brian and I will compete in the Molokai no. Challenge. <laughs> You will There's not. A, this hey, we don't, we don't have to do well. You only, <laughs> you only fuck one thing that smells like fish. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird self burn, but right. okay, all right. I'm feeling the energy, and I'm loving it. <laughs> oh my god! Brian, question seven. Yep. Here we go. And you need, the, you need this. You need this to stay, to stay in the game. No, I know it's super important. I'm dialed in. Quote. I'm not sick. Hackers are gaining access to networks without users even knowing it via SMS hashtag phishing. Learn how to stay secure from at Gary J. Davis. I mean, that does seem like the reasonable <laughs> advice of presidential candidate John McAfee, but... Cybersecurity expert. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I can't wait till the after show when we go back and wait look at... Wait a minute, like, did he found that shit. company? Yeah, he sure did. He sure did. That's his company. He sure did. He found it. New every day. (laughs) Okay, so that's the the big reveal. This is so great. Is that Bonnie is just now (laughs) understanding? (laughs) Like, but like that video that we're all thinking of constantly through this whole bit, Bonnie's not seen yet. So that'll be after show fodder. We'll we'll have to (laughs) share that with her. Uh, uh, Yeah, that's definitely the company, not the man. That's uh, at McAfee. At McAfee, Brian, your answer of At McAfee is... Yeah! Oh, Bonnie. Oh, Bonnie. This video. Like, I'm, I'm terribly afraid you're going to try to go to bed uh, before we get a chance to show it to you. I have to go to bed. <sighs> well, maybe, maybe we can... Uh, Here we go. We're to moving on. We're Here. moving on. Question eight. Gotta... Justin, this one's for you. Quote... Was at a bar in Hatteras, and the wait li- and the waitress quietly passed me a note. "Quote: I want to fuck you." I didn't respond. I don't trust a woman who doesn't charge money for sex. Pros don't take waitress jobs. Men, if you think ever there is such a thing as free sex, then you live in a closet. <laughs> now is that? Um... It's got to be. At <laughs> the weird, it's a weird uh, 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 terminology. So. To... Say that for men who don't who think that there's such a thing as free sex, you live in a closet. Like that's already a metaphor for something that doesn't necessarily plug into what he's saying. Right. Mm. Um. So you gotta ding him on the mixed metaphors. <laughs> or the company. Or the company. Or the company. I didn't say it was definitely him. It might be the noted malware company McAfee. Uh, uh, but no, I, I do think that this is official McAfee. Uh, uh, listen, l- words to live by. All right, Justin, your answer of official McAfee is... Man, dude, this tight, knows, tight uh, round, tight round. Just yesterday from one John McAfee. Jesus. <laughs> there we go. All right, just a God, couple I, more. I, I, it's I, so I, tight. It's four to must, four. What must it be like to give so few fucks? That's so amazing. Well, I mean, he obviously gave so few fucks to that waitress. who, who <laughs> yeah. passed well, I mean, because I obviously to- it was a phishing scam, and he was wise to her shenanigans. Yeah. No, thank you, sir. Or ma'am. That's what he said. I don't live in a closet. (laughs) (laughs) All right, Brian. Yep. Here we go. This is question nine. Quote, my sidearm is with me 24-7. More, (laughs) my sidearm is always in my hand when I'm on the toilet, sleeping, and making love. Puts a kink in foreplay, but some women love it. Man, Accidental oh. discharge? No. Some intentional when idiots tried to rush me. Two women spontaneously orgasmed. Go figure. <laughs> that sounds like the company, which means I assume official McAfee. <laughs> official McAfee. Okay, your answer is correct. Correct, Amundo. With uh, Man, dude, with, that messaging on point. With uh, some photos. Here's a photo of his gun in the shower, and it's on scratch. Look at that. He keeps it in a little towel, towel, and everything. Aww. In the shower? Like, it seems like it would render oh, it useless if uh, you yeah, yeah, got yeah, wet all the time. I mean, not a, not if you oil it up and clean it every day. You you, you clean the machine. You got to break it down, oil it up. All right, Justin, this next one's very important because uh, uh, if you don't get this, Brian's going to win the game. And, yeah, and, that's and... right. Me and my buddy, uh, the corporation McAfee. Matt McAfee. McAfee. All right. Go. All right. I got it. We're, this is the, I'm gonna. This is a slam dunk. Bryce, I, I'll tell you what. I'm starting to catch on. There's a bit of a pattern to these. I, I feel like I cracked your code. I, I, I'm I'm the security captain now. <laughs> oh, you want to lead the game? <laughs> no, I, oh. I'm. Talking oh, a lot he, of shit. he's making uh, a reference to the the to Tom, the Tom Hanks, Hanks movie. movie yeah. Sure. Exactly. All right. Exactly. Question Brian, check your phone. <laughs> 
I can't, I, oh I'm not looking at this. Question 10. Quote. God damn it, Justin! <laughs> you may be right. No, 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 stop reading no, anything! Stop. God damn it, Brian! Stop. <laughs> Good lord. Question 10. <laughs> I gotta say, oh, these no, guys please. are way funnier when they don't feel like they're gonna get crucified for the things they'll say. <laughs> Funny, oh we can't God. go into this. Number 10. Oh. Quote oh. As with all great cultural transitions, true evolution starts at the bottom with the poor, the disenfranchised, the marginalized. It is no surprise then that in this crypto revolution, it is Africa that is making the dollar obsolete. That, does that sound sounds like... like a very salient point by noted lunatic John <laughs> McAfee. <laughs> and so your answer is, of course. Official McAfee. At official McAfee. Oh. Your answer is. Bam! Oh, that's an article. All right. Well, it means we got to go the, to the tiebreaker. Oh, good. Thank goodness. Uh, we're, we're, I'm going to give you both this answer, and you're going to answer at the same time. All right. Uh, just out loud. We'll just do it out loud. Super okay. cash. Trust. Yep. Yep. Trust. 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 And this is for 10 points. 10 p Oh, that's a lot of points. And so even though you guys are tied at five and five, yeah. it's anybody's game. Yeah. If you ask me. <laughs> Quote. Search engines like Google and Bing are blacklisting fewer sites, leaving users vulnerable to potential hashtag malware attacks. Details from at Gary J. Davis. Dude, uh, I, I, I'm i going to say that it has to right, be right. McAfee because... Uh, well, you're going to answer at the same time. Oh. Uh, you know what? Come at me, bro. Oh. You, you... Wait, sorry. Say that again. Nope. <laughs> I, I won't. I won't. I already said it. I already locked my oh, God thing. God damn it. Then uh, I know. I don't know what the thing was. I was too busy thinking of something. <laughs> you, you were getting ready to <laughs> text. Send me another text. That I can't repeat or even type. But... Well, uh, uh, Brian already gave his answer, so I'm going right, to record it. I'll do it, the but... opposite of Brian. Fuck you, Brian. <laughs> <I'm just laughs> <laughs> All right. For 10 points and the game, the correct answer is McAfee. Congratulations, Brian. Yeah. I won by skill. I'm better at this game. Even, even, even while being under the weather. Uh, do, Congratulations, do have... Brian. Congratulations. Are you feeling better? Uh, well, well done. Uh, well played. Uh, uh, you you have you have uh, bested me in McAfee combat, and there's only one recourse, and that's for us to find out how you fuck those whales. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm just checking my uh, text messages to uh, make sure that, uh, <laughs> that I haven't got anything new. If you have an idea for a game or a bit, a doc, something you want to send in, send it to mail at nightattack.tv. Also, coming up later at the end of the show, we're going to do a little bit of mailbag. we got a lot of good emails, but if you have comments, questions, responses, critiques, whatever, send it to mail, M-A-I-L, at nightattack.tv. Thank you, guys. Yeah. So what do you, what, what do you say we go to next? Uh, well, what do you say we do a little uh, Diamond Time? Yeah, that sounds good. Diamond Time is the portion of the show where we shout out your projects. Just head on over to diamondclub.reddit.com, and you'll see a sticky post that says Diamond Time for this week. Uh, make sure to keep them short so we, we could read them right on the air. For example, Neshcom writes... No, you can skip that one. Oh, I, okay. Uh... Uh, uh, you go to Rhinex, maybe. <laughs> Rhinex says, I'm growing a beard stash in support of all men's health. I'm also doing this for our future men and women, men in training and the men we lost as a family. It's less about donations and more about the conversation. I'm happy if you have a conversation with someone. Or however, if you want to show some Diamond Club support, you can support this Mo Bro. Of course, we're in Movember, or about to hit. Wait, no, yeah, we're, we're in November. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mobro.co slash 13845185 or bit.ly slash diamondmoface. Awesome. Uh, uh, D Pounds SJ says, my brother's a great legacy card game is being released on Kickstarter. Not only does it have a great unique art for every card, but it gets better every time you play as it customizes itself to your play style. Just head on over to bit.ly slash destroy these. That is capital D and destroy capital T in these. 
Crimson King writes in saying, Hey, Diamond Club, Patreon supporter since Ghost Dad here. I'm on a Halo 5 team that's practicing for DreamHack. I'm pushing to becoming an affiliate on Twitch. So could you please come visit my stream at bit.ly slash YOLO420HALO, all lowercase, to say hi and drop a follow. I'm online playing with my team right now. Oh, he is. Hey. Uh, for those of you guys online, uh, it's twitch.tv slash Crimson King, all Ks, 1999. So Crimson King, 1999. Awesome possum. Folks, you can go ahead and become a part of Diamond Time right here on our subreddit. That is reddit.com slash r slash diamond club or diamondclub.reddit.com. You can see the sticky post at the top of the page. First, or sorry, top three entries every single week get read at the end of the show. And now it's time that, uh, that we check into the Movie Draft Minute. Welcome to Movie Draft Minute presented by CosmicRadio.tv for the week of November 12th, 2018. I'm your host, Roberto Viegas. A small squad of American soldiers find horror behind enemy lines on the eve of D-Day. All right, let's go check the rankings. Team John Trucker is in sixth place, still waiting for his first film. Team Corkillers is in 5th place, $37.4 million. Team Justin is in 4th place, $43.8 million. Team Nicole is in 3rd place, $224.8 million. Team DTNS is in 2nd place, Overlord bringing $11.4 million a week. The Girl in the Spider's Web bringing $8.7 million a week. Dr. Seuss the Grinch bringing $78.2 million a week, bringing their total to $306 million. And in first place with $360.2 million, it's Team Brian. And that is your Movie Drive Minute for the week of November 12th, 2018. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, I'm so fucked. Wait, why? Because uh, none of my... Is it because you don't have enough movies with enough value that to win the game? Yeah, pretty okay. much. <laughs> All right. Uh, has, I mean, who knows? Creed two could be a gigantic success. I don't know. Ralph could what, be a gigantic what did success. What the first Creed do? Could be a, but I'm I'm fucked. That fucking that goddamn Neil Armstrong fucked me, but good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you ask me, should have stayed on the moon. Get him out of here. Am I right? I tell you what, you would have done a whole lot better than coming down here and making a shitty movie. <laughs> Fucking if he, boring. If he'd stayed up there, maybe people would watch this shit. Am I right, Buzz? They should have rewritten that movie where Buzz was the only guy who made it out. It's me, I know. Hollywood He would have been Buzz doing backflips, telling <laughs> great jokes instead of having a <laughs> sullen moment of stoicism that only pays off in a final, uh, did you know that, factoid. Uh, uh <laughs> That I'm sure was in one of his boring ass fucking books. <laughs> uh yeah, man. Uh, so, 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 what, what, are, what are the big hits left? I mean, we got Fantastic Beasts, which I'm sure will make some cash. Creed will, will Ralph. make money, but money, but not crazy money. Ralph, um, Ralph will make money. Uh, uh, Creed two might. I, mean, I don't know. Who knows? Man, I don't uh, know. Spider Man could. Uh, Aquaman might. Mary Poppins got the kids vote. Holmes and Watson could be. Uh, a surprise. So, the Ralph Breaks the Internet will be really interesting because the first one played on nostalgia for a very particular time in video games, and and those characters were brought to life. But I, now, all of a sudden, that same nostalgia that attracted me as a forty three year old man to uh, Wreck It Ralph um, is sort of being turned on its head to be like, I guess, remind me that I'm old now. And and have it be all about the internet and how uh, out of out of touch uh, people who loved Donkey Kong are. I mean, well, I don't. I don't think it's it's making you old. I mean, you are very internet literate. You will probably get all the internet jokes that they are making. Sure, sure, sure. But 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 sort of. I, I'm talking about like the the beneath the surface like uh, uh, vibe. Yeah, I mean, I guess the question would be if you're doing a sequel, can you do another sequel? Is there enough there to mine about video games that you would spend uh, on an, another whole story? Or do these characters need to go on a different adventure? Like, I, I like, think they could they could really make me cackle if they do a thing where, like, you know, Ralph looks at, you know, one of the addictive kids games and it's like, wait, so you just put the thing in the thing and that's all it is? And, and like, but, but, but I feel like that would be so isolating to mainstream audiences that, that they would never risk, you know, wasting time on that. 
I don't know. I mean, we will see. I hope it does a billion dollars because I really <laughs> fucking need it. Uh, and I own that movie. Uh, uh, but other than that, I mean, you know, look, I think that the Fantastic B stuff is interesting. Have you, have you noticed that these ads are getting like more and more about Johnny Depp being creepy as if like they're they're finding in their in their testing that Wait, it's is, like is 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 it Johnny Depp or Jared Leto? I thought it was Jared Leto. No, it's Johnny Depp is the bad guy. Uh, oh. Wait, is Jared Leto in there, or did I make that up? You just you made that up. up. Okay, right on. I do that sometimes. No, no, no. This was the thing at the end of the last movie. Colin Farrell is this really good villain. Oh, that's right. And then they transform like, and he just turns into Johnny Depp (laughs) randomly. Uh, And then you're like, oh, I guess Johnny Depp's in the next movie. Like, I don't know. Was Colin Farrell busy? Like, was it like, oh, fuck you? Uh, You better get Johnny Depp for this next one. Uh, but yeah, no, all the all the ads now are all just like creepy Johnny Depp being creepy. And and like, I don't know. I wonder whether or not uh, uh, that movie is just a total fucking mess. Uh, have you have you been I guess neither of us have really gone to the movies to see a lot uh, like Bonnie and the kids went and saw, uh, I don't know, uh, whatever the late freaking nutcracker. Uh, <laughs> that's a, uh, uh, there was this great moment after they came home and Bonnie was like, yeah, we went and saw that movie. It was a bit predictable. I'm like, well, let me guess. Is it, oh, character from another land? There are four lands. Happy land, awesome land, cool land, and bad land. But you're going to have to unite all the lands. And she's like, yeah, pretty much that. So uh, everybody was dancing around. Like, I mean, do they have any of the tropes from, like, the Nutcracker? Like, is there, like, the rat people and all that shit? Or I don't know about that, but I know that apparently a lot of 11-year-olds were disappointed when uh, a romantic interest between two characters ended in sort of a, well, see you around. And then they were like, like, as close as 11-year-old girls will get to go to yelling at the screen, fuck you, kiss her! You know, like, it's, <laughs> <laughs> apparently kiss they were... Kiss her, you coward! <laughs> exactly. Fuck you! That's right. That's the way I heard it. Uh, yeah, no, I, I've, I've not, I've not seen that. But yeah, coming out now, uh, uh, Fantastic Beasts, uh, Girl with the Dragon. There's girl, girl in the Spider's Web didn't do Jack Diddley. And I'll tell you what, that that one dude that booked his European tour, he should do a movie called Fantastic Beats and release it at the same time and see if he can get some spillover content. By the way, yeah, they're making another goddamn Robin Hood movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I saw a headline that says, uh, get ready. This is nothing like any, this ain't your dad's Robin Hood. <laughs> <laughs> but this is not the one that's coming out in a couple of weeks. No, no, no. Or it is. It, for it this is. One that's but, out but according to my, yeah, my Google you know, hey, news. Bryce, yeah, you, yeah. You know how your dad loved that Robin Hood movie? Sure. He's a big fan of uh, the Disney Robin Hood. This course. ain't that. What? No, it. Yeah. it ain't. It ain't your dad's. And, oh, and yeah, yeah. Remember, remember, your other dad was into Prince of Thieves. Right. All he, dads have a favorite Robin Hood movie. Big Prince. Uh, that's a. Oh yeah. Oh, that. what were you? The sped up Errol Flynn generation of dads? No way, sir. So this is gonna be my. my this is your Robin defining Hood. Robin Hood. Everyone oh. gets assigned one, whether a you Robin like Hood it or not, for a new generation. Yes. Oh. He loves EDM. I'm gonna. Buy, <laughs> I'm gonna buy a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, well, I mean, like, how would, is should Robin Hood ever be like cool? Do we do we want to agree I mean, Robin Hood or should he be kind of campy and silly? We, we, this is where we enter the dangerous precipice where what I'm tempted to do, what what my heart wants to do, is rail on a, 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 a copyright law and all that that crap, like you know the Mickey Mouse law, where they keep extending it so that nobody can do a yeah. Mickey Mouse. Like meanwhile, in an alternate universe, we've already seen 75 reboots of the Star Wars franchise made by independent people because guess what? 50 years or 40 years or however freaking long is long enough to take all your profits for having Star Wars. And now everybody else should be allowed to remake it in a million different ways. But then you see the franchises that have been remade a million different ways. And you're like, do we really need another Robin Hood movie? But but it, but again, because, because well, uh, I guess Robin Hood is not a good example because that one truly is public domain. Um yeah, I As don't know. King Arthur, which is why we get a King Arthur movie, 
every two but, years. But 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 like uh like BBC Sherlock uh say what you will about the later seasons like like I really dug oh, that no, new no, no, take. No, no. I, know. You know? I just I, I thought that's where you were going with that with that that copyright argument. Oh no 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 I, I basically I I am in favor of everybody remixing everything always um and and I wish that we had a legal architecture especially because in the pre-show we were talking about detective pikachu uh man imagine a universe where you know instead of the one company that owns all the rights to all the things was able to try mashing up a you know a, a noir detective story with pikachu in a movie format with the backdrop of cockfighting uh Imagine if everybody was able to take a crack at it, and 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 I, I I suspect we would have more interesting art as a result if we did. Yeah, I don't know. I think it, it that that's just uh, uh you are you are you are a brave man making that salient argument, uh uh in in the context of do Robin we really Hood. need another Robin Hood movie, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> which was the beginning of this conversation. I will I will own a hundred percent of this. I'll totally own it. <laughs> Uh, uh, but yeah, no, who knows? I don't know. Creed two, it looks good. I'm excited for it. Hopefully, it does a million dollars. Oh, I mean, no, a lot more than a million. I need a lot more than a million. In fact, I need tens of hundreds of millions. Of yeah, dollars. dude, I I didn't think I have a chance, but but looking at it, like I don't see a lot that's gonna universally. I mean, I think court. Killers... No, you got you got the fucking you got nothing but ballers. Like night school, uh, way overperformed for you. Yeah, Star is Born has been a legit murderer yep uh it is second only to venom in terms of the the the, the money that it has made so well, far and certainly for the price i paid uh and then you got bohemian rhapsody which is a solid earner and seems Sorry, like it's gonna be yeah like, like that that movie seems to be the one that will be for everybody that's like how could you make a pg-13 queen biopic and it's like because thanksgiving's gonna come around and Everyone has to go to the theater, and even Grandma likes fat bottom girls, and that's right. so everyone's gonna go see them. A fucking they make movie. the rock and world go round. No, that's a true fact. Uh, uh, do we have any letters? Uh, we do. In fact, uh, uh, here, here's a little here's a little sound bite. Join us for drinks in the Diamond Club. In the Diamond Club. Ooh, that sounds grand. There we go. Hey. Wait, wait, what is that from? Uh, that's from Schitt's Creek, a oh, that's Canadian amazing. television that's show. That's wonderful. So until we get a proper mailbag segment. Nope, nope, uh, nope. Or... I, I think that's got to be it. Well, all okay. of a sudden, I'm going to watch Schitt's Creek. That's so, amazing. So uh, we we did we get a lot of emails. Thank you, everybody, for all your sending sending in all your emails. Uh, like this from Alanon6666, who is continuing the tradition of sending us animal pictures. Uh, with this picture of their roommate's cat. Aw, that's, that a, little that's guy. a happy cat. You, you don't often see cats with anything other than, than murder in their eyes. Yeah. Uh, that one, I, I feel like it would only be involuntary manslaughter. Good job, cat. Yeah. Uh, we also got from uh, Trey Warren. Uh, he said his dog dropped his bone into the fire pit, and he's not a really happy camper. Look at him. Aw. <laughs> Come on, drop my bone. There you go. Thank you for the animal Although pictures. That is a dope fire pit. It's a nice fire pit. Yeah, no. Oh, yeah. Uh, Chimenea. Chimenea? Yeah. Is that? Okay. There you go. Uh, we also got, uh, here we go. This is from uh, Merrill. Merrill writes, hello, Night Attack crew. Recently, it was confirmed that Alex Trebek had renewed his contract for Jeopardy through 2022. And I started thinking back to the conversation a few weeks back about who replacements should one day be. And I thought... Greg Proops, what say you? So this was an after show thing from a month or so back. Oh, man. Greg, uh, so Greg, Meryl is suggesting Greg Proops. So Greg Proops certainly has the chops to be interesting. However, like listening to Greg Proops on Harmontown, uh, he was fast to go off the rails and get really silly really fast. And so yeah. uh, I, I don't know that he has – like it seems like the perfect person would be – Mainly gravitas with a splash of humor. Greg Proops is pure humor with a what's that over there in the corner that looks shiny. <laughs> you know, it's like I, I I don't know that I buy it for that. Well, then. I I mean, although I would, my Jeopardy host will always hopefully echo the same cadence as the pod race announcer. From the Phantom Menace. Okay, are, I, are you calling out Greg Proops? <laughs> I don't. I don't think that. He necessarily – well, I mean, look, it really depends on what you would want out of – and this was what our, our discussion wound up centering on uh, with Jeopardy is that what do you want out of a new Jeopardy host? Do you want him to be 
basically what Alex Trebek was, or do you want somebody who is unique? And can make the show something. I, I think where, where we landed was you want somebody who's on the upswing and willing to just lock in and, and say, bang, yeah. like this and no higher. I'll do this for the rest of my life. Right, so it doesn't have to be your number one, but both of you give me a name. Um, Oh, geez. Uh, I think one of the strong one of the strong ones was uh, um, who's the woman from Fool Us? Is that Allison Sheridan? Uh, Allison uh, Hannigan. 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 Yeah, Hannigan. that was. She, she seemed yeah, like yeah. A, she, she was one of the the a name that the was brought hitters. up a lot. Um, weirdly, uh, oh doggone it! Uh, I've already forgotten. Justin, what things. are you feeling? Do you do you remember any of the names that we talked about? I'm, I'm gonna cry. Call the Poundstone. Lock it in. <laughs> no <Okay>. way. <laughs> Roseanne Barr. Let's go. <laughs> I forgot the bitch was white. All right. Wait, uh, thank hey, you, hold Meryl. on. Wait a minute. Why is Paula Poundstone would be would be? She's like on. Wait, wait. Don't tell me. She's got that quiz kind of background. I don't think Paula Poundstone would be a would be a terrible uh, a terrible pick. Seth MacFarlane, I think would 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 be uh, a bit. High uh, of to aim it for, would be a step down for him. For like, him, like, yeah, yeah he's yeah. so high on the ups, upswing. Yeah. Um, uh, weirdly, and and you know, we joked again. Also, he's too high uh, on the bar for it. But uh, uh, freaking um, uh, Will Ferrell, you know, uh, would be. Oh, uh, Will Ferrell would be good. He, but yeah, though I wonder if he's like kind of ready to have a downswing right as like the game show host for all time well I exactly like like he might that be would be that an position. interesting move yeah. for will ferrell to do yeah what do you think of will ferrell doing it i mean for as long as he would want to do it like i mean but he would be doing it as will ferrell or as his alex trebek i mean oh. yeah I, I think it would be one lilting to the other similar to how Steve uh, Stephen Colbert is is you know hosting then the show, but then like goes into the character Stephen Colbert, the the throwback actual celebrity Jeopardy. Okay, so we put out a couple of names. Thank you. Yeah. Well, for I would say the only thing is, oh, a uh, Babcat in the chat says Ken Jennings, and and that's sort of the default default hypothesis. If he can, right. If he could just you know funny up a little bit, then well, I think he, he'll, he he would be fine. He's and got that the dude legacy is in the background. humor books and yeah. stuff now. Uh, that sounds right. Uh, we have another email here from Joe. Joe. I like Alex Jones. Alex Jones would be good. <laughs> <laughs> well, what might that sound like, Justin? Uh, 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 here, I'm ready. Uh, uh, I'll take potent potables for a uh, thousand. And that's our daily double. Pew, 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 pew. Okay, I, I, I bet all of my money. Ready? This tiger <laughs> prowls the sidelines <laughs> of... The Cincinnati's Paul Brown Stadium. <laughs> uh, uh, what is? How did you get another platform? <laughs> <laughs> and C. <scene. laughs> okay. Great. Uh, by the way, somebody said Hank Green in the chat. Uh, gambling man. I, th I think that's oh. actually another good pick. Yeah. That would be fun. All right. This is uh, this is an email from Joe. He writes. Hello, Bryce, Brian, and Justin. Hey, I got first billing. Been a loyal listener since the Twit days. Two quick questions about your sign-off. Is See You Next Tuesday actually the letter C, letter U, next Tuesday an acronym for cunt? What? Oh, my I mean, goodness. I, I I guess, holy cow, I never realized. Justin, Justin. Wait, hold on, wait, wait, wait. What, 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 what was the second question? Okay, uh, and what are the origins of die in a fire? <laughs> okay, so number one, my first question, what are you, a fucking cop? <laughs> None of your goddamn business. <laughs> no, uh, the um, uh, uh, the origins of both of those are uh, uh, number one, the die in the fire. Uh, well, see you next Tuesday. Is we, we had to pick a day, and then we ended up on Tuesday mm -hmm. because that tended to be when I didn't have uh, stage shows that I was out on the road for. Right, and so we figured out that you know, see you next Tuesday. Is uh, it was our? It's already a phrase, right? But but the first time yeah. I heard it was on Family Guy when they were like, He's, "She's being a real see you next Tuesday uh, ah, thing." Okay, that was the first time I heard it. Do you remember your first time hearing "See you next Tuesday," Justin? Uh, geez, uh, no, no, no I, I I don't remember. It didn't uh, etch itself indelibly in my mind, but uh, uh, certainly, I look. It was a uh, specifically for when we started the sign off, which was. Because did we do the sign off in BB Live Show, or is that only an NSFW thing? I think we codified it near the end of uh, BB Live Show, but I'm sure our historians will correct us on this. Uh, because also BB Live Shows didn't really have like ends. 
<laughs> they like, sort of, uh, as scholars say, went on and on and on and on and on. Though they did have, like, definitive endpoints. They, they, correct, correct. Uh, the beginning was always very, very important. We never right. got around to figuring out an ending. How to end up. Uh, they, they definitely were, uh, as some people would call them, uh, interminable. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, and then the, yeah. the Die in a Fire, I believe... If not the the exact episode with Rosanna Pancino uh, and and uh, the Scream Queens mm. and Joe and Biagio, it was around that time that we had the idea that it was really funny to say something terrible but in a cheery way, like uh, like like what if that was a a jovial uh, salutation oh, wow. uh, valediction Ooh. was die in a fire, and in fact we got footage of them all saying. Die in a fire, and then just just waving for like an inordinately amount, long amount of time. Yeah. Uh, while we played uh, some outro music, and yeah. they just kept waving. Oh, nice. Uh, uh, yeah. There we go. Uh, all right, thank you, Joe. Uh, this is an email from Kaiva. Kaiva writes, "Hi, gang. A couple episodes ago, you were struggling to remember the name of Smurfs. So here's a song by Tripod that might help, called the Ballad of the F- of Floor Buffer Smurf. Floor Buffer Smurf. We're gonna hear a little snippet. Is this a real thing? Now I buff the floors of Smurfland, you see. And they never made a figurine out of me. I'm just floor buffer Smurf, I'm no one in her eye. So she's been hanging out with those popular guys. And there's so many Smurfs that they sell at BP. She loves all the others, so why not me? Sounds like a very specific Smurf, Smurf this is sung to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Somebody who's just like, I swear to God, there's only one vagina in this whole village. One, Will you please, I swear to God, yeah. just yeah. notice me. But Lady Smurf has decided to charm. Okay. Very cool. Yeah, man. Thank you for that. Uh, a little bit of Smurf humor for you. Yeah, man. Yeah, just... what about a whale fucker Smurf? <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> All right, we have one last email from Nick Reese. You might remind him, remember him from last week or the week before. Uh, he he emailed in to say that he had just started listening back from episode one of Night Oh, Night yeah, Attack. yeah. So he's got an update for us. Hello. I will be emailing every week until I get to listen to you guys live. I just finished episode 54. Wait, 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 wait. So he's still in the past mm-hmm. and we'll get up to this point. Oh, this is wonderful, Justin. Right. Because yeah, that right. like like we've yeah, at yeah. least got a few episodes to uh to to, to so start he, setting he's up. at he's at episode 54, 54. of Night Attack or um, NSFW show. It's got to be Attack. Night Attack. Yeah. Night Attack. Um. Uh. How could this have been done? Night attack. That's how. Love the show and can't stop listening, to you guys. When I get to watch you guys live, I will become a patron. What better way to use my money than to support the best show ever created? See you next Tuesday, Nick R. Thank you, Nick. Well, hey, right, just Nick bring uh, four hundred nineteen of your friends. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay, we have one last one here from uh, Kitsune Ichi. Uh, they write, your recent live event seemed to have gone very well. What is the worst live event you ever did? For inspiration, think back to things like NACA 2011 or this pictured New Year's Eve 2011. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> uh, congratulations, Collier. You're the big winner. <laughs> it, it, it's so funny because we, we didn't wind up going into it during the segment about the fake uh, the fake touring van. But that when we were talking about this before the show, that was literally it's like we know what it's like to be lied to that there's a lot of tickets being sold. We know what it's like to be lied to and say that everything's being taken care of. Yep. Uh, we know what it's like to be lied to and said like, oh, no, 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 we're checking to make sure everything's OK and have somebody assure us that everything is, uh, is 100 and like say, hey, look, no, nah, there's these. There's these other things that are selling these tickets for us. It'll be totally covered. And that was New Year's Eve 2011. I drove by that facility on the way to Epcot uh, uh, this weekend. And the Uber driver that I was in the car with Mm -hmm. uh, made the point to say, yeah, that place has never been open. It is perennially a ghost town. The only time that apparently it has ever even shambled to life uh, for any any uh, amount of time was when we graced its presence as the MCs of the 2011 New Year's Eve extravaganza. I uh, I think of it every time I see a Kia Soul. Every time I find <laughs> myself behind a Kia Soul, I think of that night. So uh, we we just this is breaking news. We just got an email from 
Nick R <laughs> is listening to the show with an update because we didn't do a show last week. Oh, so that was yeah, our email for last right. week. So last the last email he was on episode fifty four. Uh, that was about a week ago. Where do you think he is now? What seventy two? How many can you watch? How how much of us can a human possibly stomach? Oh Jesus! Um, wait wait, is he watching us now? Or did I don't he know say- that the timing on this is weird because it just came in a minute ago. So if you he might be cheating a little he bit. He might be cheating a little bit. I mean, just but... previewing, maybe just you know yeah. uh, coming in to visit. You see the trailer, like oh, I look forward to eventually watching that episode. Uh, uh, so, all right, so he was at fifty four. Fifty four. Uh, so uh, Justin, what do you, what number? Do you I'll, think? I'll go under Brian. But You'll you go... said seventy two. Yeah, yeah. I'll okay. go under seventy two. Oh my goodness. Nick is at episode 72. Whoa! <laughs> I feel like we all won. That's we amazing. <laughs> that's fucking amazing. You nailed it. <laughs> and that's the end of our mailbag. Thank you. If you have an email, send it in. Mail at nightattack.tv. M-A-I-L at nightattack.tv. Oh, it. my goodness. Thank you to everybody who joins us week after week. I'm sorry that I'm under the weather, and I'm sorry that it, it clearly sounded that way. But I'm not sorry that <laughs> I kicked Justin's ass at a very important game. That's what I learned is that, that I is can very, tell. Very true. As I recognize Hando Tadpool as our bit boss for the show, 1,500 bits. Brian, check your phone. Oh, God damn it. Uh, uh, I'm checking my phone, and what do I got here? Uh, oh, no, that's bad, too. It's old. It's an older one. Oh, Jesus Good Christ, job. Justin. What are you doing? <laughs> they're very clever, and we can't read they're, any they're of them. Not, they're not even that clever. They just barely rhyme. I mean... <laughs> And uh, what a stereotype to the Empire State. Okay. Hey, <laughs> hey, oh, oh, hey. Hey, how about this one? See you next Tuesday. Hey, die in a fire. Love Every you guys. Every time you go, I get so sad that I want to drink a warm glass of Drano. Night attack. 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 I love you. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>